Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. I know I've done similar problems before and maybe I've even done the same problem before. If I did, I apologize. But in this video, I'm going to show you something that's crazy, okay? And that's something that we recently worked on. I'll share with you, hopefully you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. I'll share some links down below and here as well. Okay, great. Now we have z to the power i equals one plus i. Z is a complex number. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. Uh, I made a playlist and a bunch of other videos where I solve different problems. In the lecture videos, I go over basics of complex numbers, starting with the very definition. Okay, so having said that, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. We have an unknown base is being raised to the power i, to make matters worse, right? We don't even know what z is, and that's being raised to the power i, and that just produces 1 plus i. So from one complex number to another uh, exponentially. How do we achieve that? What type of number are we looking at? Is z real? Can z be real? Because sometimes, you know, uh, we can use complex numbers to produce real numbers, such as i to the power i, right? I made a video about that too. Go ahead and check it out. Anyway, so I'll be presenting two methods because the second method, actually, I'm very excited about it. Hopefully, you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to share with you today. Okay, let's start with the first method. The first method uses standard method. So z to the i can be written as e to the power i ln z. And 1 plus i, as you know, hopefully, uh, has a modulus of root 2 from Pythagorean theorem, and its argument is pi over 4. Now, obviously, there are infinitely many ways to write it. I can just multiply i times pi over 4, or I can add multiples of 2 pi, which will uh, basically give you multiple values. That's why this is multi-valued. Okay? Cool. Now, this is 1 plus i, and I'm going to set it equal to z to the i. So we have now e to the power i ln z equals root 2 multiplied by e to the power i times pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. Again, n is an integer if I forgot to say that. Now we're going to go ahead and natural log both sides. When we natural log e to the power something, ln e is 1, so we're going to get the power ln root 2 plus, again, the power i times pi over 4 plus 2 pi. So from an exponential, we kind of go to a standard form, complex number, and vice versa. Of course, you can do e to the power of both sides, and you'll be going backwards. Okay? Cool, cool. Our goal is to solve for z. Let's first divide everything by i, or multiply by negative i, even better. And notice that ln root 2 is ln 2 to the power 1 half, so I can kind of write this as 1 half ln 2. That's something that I would probably do early on uh, in now let's see how we can handle this. Multiply everything by negative i. ln z is going to be negative i squared is going to be 1. So it's going to be pi over 4 plus 2 pi n minus i times 1 half ln 2. You can do, write this in so many different ways. i ln 2 divided by 2. ln 2 divided by 2 multiplied by i, so on and so forth. Doesn't matter, no big deal. This is ln z. How do you find z from ln z? We have an identity, right? What is that? It is z equals e to the power ln z. So if that's ln z, I can go ahead and exponentiate it to get z, which is going to give me e to the power pi over 4 plus 2 pi n minus i times 1 half ln 2. And I'm going to show you that there is actually another way to write it, which, first of all, you can obtain it by separating these two things, right? Separating these two things. Come on, notability. Stop doing that, or Apple Pen, I don't know which one is acting up. But you can go ahead and separate these two things, and then kind of write this as e to the power i times negative 1 half ln 2, so that now this becomes r e to the i theta form, which is Euler's uh, exponential or polar form. This would be your modulus, I mean r, and this would be your theta. And then for e to the i theta, you can use cosine theta plus i sine theta, and again write that in standard form if you want. But exponential form is more compact, 
uh, in the uh, standard form, it's just going to look crazy. Make sense? Okay. But if you did it, you could do that. And so, for example, e to the power i times negative 1 half ln 2 would turn into cosine of negative 1 half ln 2 plus i times sine of negative 1 half ln 2. And then you can just multiply it by this gigantic r and you'll get the answer. No need to do that. You can leave it like that. That's perfectly fine. So that's the solution, right? And now let's see how we can solve this problem with the second method. And I can't tell you enough about the second method. That's something that I'm very, very excited about. Okay, great. So here's the second method. Remember, I think it was, was it yesterday? I believe so. Either, either yesterday or two days ago, we did a problem where we're kind of solving a general equation, which is z to the power a plus b i equals c plus d i. And we came up with a formula that finds z. If a plus d, b i and c plus d i are given complex numbers, then we should be able to find z from here. And ta-da, there is your formula. So in our particular case, what does that mean? Whenever you have something like z to the i equals 1 plus i, that just means that a is equal to 0, b is equal to 1, c is equal to 1, and d is equal to 1. So what does that mean? We can go ahead and use this formula, plug everything in, and solve it. Why? The formula is probably something that you will never memorize, right? It's too complicated. I don't think anyone can memorize. I mean, I shouldn't say that. I know some people are very good at memorizing things, and I know there will be someone who should be able to memorize it. But anyways, maybe a memory champion. But um, I don't think there's a need. This is quite complicated, right? But what is good about the formula is that it's available and you can apply it to very different scenarios. For example, if I ask you a question like, what is z to the power 2 plus i equals 1 minus i, z to the power 1 minus i equals 2 plus i, so on and so forth. We can make thousands of problems. And also, another thing that's really good about uh, coming up with a formula, I think, is um, you can program it. You can use AI because you know AI is kind of like falling short uh, of solving math problems, especially the ones that are complicated. I've seen, I've showed you some examples, remember, and I, some people are like, why are you complaining about Wolfram Alpha? It's just a language model. Fine, then it's just language model. But uh, even ChatGPT, I don't think, can solve these kinds of problems. But when you plug in the formula, obviously, it is very good at uh, applying a given formula, right? Even coming up with a formula, maybe, hopefully, in the future. But I don't think in the near future. Anyways, too much ranting about AI. Let's continue with the solution. So if you go ahead and plug these values in, are we going to be getting the same solution, you think? We're going to go ahead and find out. Let's plug in these values. For example, A, a being 0 is actually a very good thing because this whole thing is going to cancel out. And then this one all as well, that's nice. And then we end up with something like this. And B, multiply by R tangent. So we have to kind of find the R tangent. And you have to be careful about R tangent. Uh, luckily, we are in the first quadrant. So that's good. Uh, I'm going to use the just R tangent. Remember, I told you about the subtleties. If you're in the third quadrant, tangent is still positive. But you kind of have to make some changes, right? So just go ahead and watch that video. I'll share the links, hopefully, uh, down below. And here, uh, d over c is 1, so our tangent 1 is going to be pi over 4. So b will just be multiplied by pi over 4. And then plus i, uh, we're going to have inside negative b over 2, b is 1, so it's going to be negative 1 half. ln c squared plus d squared, which is root 2, uh-oh, we're getting the same number. And then this should be divided by a squared plus b squared, which is 1. So we shouldn't have a denominator. So that should pretty much be, but of course, I did not include multiples of 2 pi in this case. And it's kind of like, uh-oh, I'm supposed to write it as z equals e to the power. Sorry about that. I didn't realize this is e to the power, so z should be equal to that. And then do you think uh, it is the same thing as what I found? Uh, that's for you to find out, okay? If you, for, exa for example, get rid of 2 pi n, like replace n with 0, do we get the same thing, right? Oh, I forgot to replace b with 1. Sorry about that. I don't know why I did that. b is 1, so you shouldn't have a b there. And this should be the same as the first method, right? Anyways, I think so. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and 
Bye bye.